Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Maria Luisa Garnica, and I am the Education USA Advisor in Guatemala, in Guatemala City. Today, we have a very special session, and we will talk about the English as a second language test options that are available to you and from which you can you know, make the best choice for the test that fits you best for your US higher education journey. So um, before we get started, I wanted to take a minute and review real briefly what is Education USA. So remember, we are a global network from the US Department of State that focuses on promoting and providing accurate and comprehensive information regarding US higher education. So um, if you are not familiar with us and you just happen to be in this webinar, I encourage you to reach out to your Education USA Advising Center or the closest one to you. There are many, many, many formats of Education USA Advising Centers and you can reach out through social media or you can go to educationusa.state.gov and find your Education USA Advising Center. Um, today we have a very special session and I'm, I'm, the, the intro is gonna be very brief because we have a lot of guests. Today we have seven different English test op uh, options for you. So we have guests from the Cambridge assessment. We have guests from, I guess, from the Michigan language assessment, from Duolingo English test, from the IELTS option, from ITEP, from TOEFL, and from Pearson. Okay, so each of them are going to share with you um, any updates that may have happened throughout the last year and a bit. And uh, they'll give you also different information to take into consideration to make the best and most informed decision when choosing your English as a second, um, as a second language test option. All right, so to begin, I wanted to introduce our first speaker, who is um, Hazel Mariscal from the Cambridge Assessment English. So take it away, Hazel. We will be listening. Thank you very much, Maria Luisa. Let me share my screen. And there we go. Okay, so can all see my screen? Yes. Excellent. So, okay, thank you very much for this invitation, Maria Luisa and Education USA. My name is Hazel Mariscal. I'm Regional Recognition Manager Americas at Cambridge Assessment English. And let me give you some information about Cambridge. Our educational mission is to help people to learn English and prove their skills to the world. Hazel. Yes? You're in a split mode at the minute. Do you want to put it into, you can see the next slide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just do that trick with the three dots. Here it goes. Perfect, there you go. Thank you, Johnny. Okay, so again, uh, we continue. We are part of the Cambridge Assessment, helping learners to demonstrate and fulfill their potential. We are a unit of University of Cambridge, and we have a strategic alliance with the University of Michigan through Cambridge Language Assessment. And well, let's start with some numbers. We are accepted by over 25,000 universities, employers, and government departments worldwide. Over 6.5 qualifications and tests are taken before the pandemic, were taken before the pandemic. And we have a network of over 2,800 exam centers in 130 countries. Some challenges that we have faced in the times of the pandemic COVID-19, well, let me tell you some of them. One and the most important was the closure of schools that are the majority of them are venues. In the beginning of the pandemic, centers were also not allowed to operate in their own premises in many countries. We had limitations on the number of people in venues due to the social distancing, and we had delays with shipments of exam materials. So as you can see, it was challenging, but we were resilient, both Cambridge and our authorized centers. 
Lessons we learn. For Cambridge, it is crucial to maintain the highest standards to offer regulation of quality. That is why we reinsure our security, quality, and reliability, but it's also important to maintain the expectations of our candidates, families, universities, and other stakeholders. Due to the highest stake nature of our exam C1 Advance, which is one of the uh, exams that has more recognition in the US, we bring confidence to universities because they will accept qualified candidates with the most accurate results. And we have seen a growing recognition in the USA. Uh, we have learned that during the pandemic because, the, because there has been an increase in the recognition because universities have been more receptive and more open to, to accept an international pool of candidates with a great performance because they take our, our qualifications. Connectivity. We have, a, when we talk about C1 Advance, we have two versions of the test. One is paper-based and the other is computer-based. When it's paper-based, the materials remain the same protocols as well as the delivery of the completed test. Computer-based, once the candidate has finished the test, the system will close. <clears throat> and in both cases, the results will go directly to the UK for marking. Registration updates. During the pandemic, the flexible dates were more common because of the, the situation. But now that C1 Advance uh, and the restrictions by the government have been relaxed, the dates are fixed again during the year. Uh, and this is because the nature of the high stakes exam. Security of the testing. Well, in this case, Candidates must present the ID, uh, the ID and must be presented on the day of the exam. And they are required to use face masks uh, in all, in all, during, during all the tests. We have sanitary accommodations uh, established on 2020 and it continue uh, as part of our protocols. And when I mentioned that platform closes, it's based on the computer-based uh, protocols too, because once the, the candidate finished the computer-based test, the system is closed and no changes can be made. Improvements in services. We have implemented a center communication strategy with an account management approach to support our centers on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Dates, as, well, as we said, remain fixed and mandatory test day photo is a, something very important for C1 Advance. It's the only time that the candidate will take off his face mask to take the test day photo because it's required for the vast majority of universities that recognize us. Some other improvements is a new feature in the delivery of listening material supported through a dedicated system. Before of that, we had another type of listening materials, but now with the pandemic, we have learned to improve and to innovate, and the listening materials are now digital, and they are sent to the centers, authorized centers, for, for the listening part in our, in our tests, in our exams. <clears throat> Any challenges that we have seen throughout the pandemic? First of all, is the candidate safety, and this is the most important thing for us. This is why we have followed all the protocols that are required by authorities, and travel restrictions have been a, a, very, a very important challenge. You remember there were times where the, tra the travel re restrictions in the, in the same city or from city to another city were very, very strict cancellation of exams. For example, we uh, establish exam attendance protocols. For example, if the candidate couldn't make it for the seat, for sitting to the exam the day that was established, we rescheduled the sessions, or in other cases, the refund was possible for these candidates. And the use of face masks as part of the protocols, the use of hand sanitizer head, uh, gel, uh, social distancing, etc. 
but also there are other lessons that we have learned and we implement during this pandemic uh, COVID-19. And those were webinars and supporting our centers during the pandemic times with a lot of information and sharing of best practices around the exam delivery. Other were best practices around social media distancing options, sanitary measures, and obviously in line with local regulations with are always leading. Flexible exam delivery windows to offer more dates so candidates can be spread out more uh, during these pandemic times. As I mentioned, C1 Advance, C1 Advance had some flexibility in the dates to take the test, but now uh, they are fixed again. And some online options around training and certification for speaking examiners, but also for remote speaking tests. Those are the lessons we learned. As you see, we travel uh, all together in these strange and challenging times, but we are very optimistic about the future. So this is all for me. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Rachel. And if you have any questions, please let me know and I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank Go, you, I'm so. back to you, Maria Luisa. Yeah, now it's uh, Johnny Frank's turn from the Michigan Language Assessment. So please, Johnny, take it away. Thank you. Let me just open this and hopefully, is it showing in full presentation mode? Are we good? Now it is, yes. Awesome. Well, <laughs> Evening or afternoon, depending on where the sun is, where you are. Um, great for you to be, uh, well, great to have you here. And I'm going to give you a whistle stop tour of the Michigan English test and, and how it can support international student mobility. Before we go on that grand tour, I'd like to just compliment what Hazel was saying there, because some of you might think Hazel and Johnny colleagues, do they work together? What is it with Cambridge and Michigan? And the answer is yes, we do work together. Uh, Michigan Language Assessment is, is a collaboration between the University of Michigan and Cambridge Assessment English, which is part of the University of, of, of Cambridge. The reason for that alliance is very simple, both very well-known and prestigious public universities with, with superb track records in, in testing, in education, and in particular in English language learning. And our, our kind of mantra at Michigan is prove your English by taking hopefully one of our tests. That'll help you to achieve your goals and in turn, it'll help you own your future. So equipping yourself with the English skills and the abilities needed, not just to succeed, to get into a university, but to thrive and do well there. And beyond that, um, go smoothly into the world of work. Although that can wait, right? Studying first. So times have been changing. Hazel commented a little bit about this, that access has been a big issue over the last 18 months. Test dates and availability, of course. Getting results back in time for maybe some tight deadlines uh, with, with courses opening and closing. But I just want to make a, a brief comment before I, we could look at the that the, the raft of innovations that MET has on things that maybe shouldn't change. So I look at it as insane and new. Some people talk about radical transformation and I think about, well, evolution in testing and evolution in the tests available for, for students like yourselves to be able to succeed and excel uh, when they get to higher education um, institutions. So some of the things that should really stay the same, um, I'm detailing here, right? So the kind of common things that you're used to in terms of, well, how long a test should be, maybe not too short, it should be secure, there should be an emphasis on security. That should have happened years ago anyway, and it always was happening with Cambridge and Michigan. Um, reliable results, uh, again, some, something that year on year institutions can count on, therefore they recognize our exams and, um, and offer them as a potential um, entry point for students looking to get into US higher education. And importantly, that CFR alignment, so we know how things stack up in terms of common learning goals and all the research that the, the CFR or the Marco helps us to understand. Now, there are some new things coming along, increased accessibility. How do we deliver digitally? How do we get tests taken at people's home? And I know that we're all excited about sharing some of those um, innovations today. How do we get faster results if we need them? Well, uh, we'll look at that. And, and what about 
remote proctoring, what does that entail? Again, this is a brief tour, but we're going to see some interesting things, I hope. So one of the things that stays the same for MET, which was paper-based and has been around for over a decade now, is it, it remains focused on the, the CFR levels that you see there. So covering from a kind of high beginner to a low advanced level. Why these levels? Well, these levels suit quite nicely those that are required at higher institution, higher education institutions in the US and across the world. And also like a B2 level on an MET, that kind of score we've seen year after, years, year after year and feedback as well from institutions that use the test, um, whether that's to take the test in their premises or accept students taking the test. We know that a B2 is a B2 and a C1 is a C1. We know there's high reliability. And this is for reference only, but it gives you an idea of how it's broken down. So it's a couple of hours to take the test. Uh, none of this has changed for the digital innovation or the digital, I don't know, you know, uh, frontier. So let's look at that now. <clears throat> so how does it look in center? We, we, we run a traditional test center network and that's gonna stay the same, but we're also gonna expand that network with partners. And this is from October. So literally weeks, weeks away, MET Digital is launching. So when you go to a center, like a physical test center, Data are available at any time of the year. So, you know, availability is quite good. It's human proctored in the center, as you'd imagine, people watching you take it on a computer and human scored as well. This can be done via our test center network and also by the Prometric test center network, which, which adds to what we can do and gives us a bigger reach. But more interestingly, MET Digital will now be available at home. Um, that means that Again, anytime, anywhere. So that access is there and that accessibility is there. Um, you, you'll be, we'll be using software or AI augmented as well as human proctoring, which means there'll be all kinds of things going on to make sure that you, know, you are where you say you are, you're doing what you're, you're supposed to be doing and we'll freeze windows so that you only work on the test. And again, it'll be human scored, um, which, it, which the reason for that is we know that MET paper-based has been reliable for more than a decade. So we're not going to change that right now. We're changing the delivery. We're not, as we say in English, throwing the baby out with the bath water. And do, working with Prometric is allowing us to, to do this. Um, again, it's on the platform, Prometric platform. That's where the proctoring takes place. That's where the booking takes place. And it's a very smooth journey. If you're taking it from home, you just register with us, get the appropriate links, you log on. It's all very smooth, I do assure you. Also, results are coming quite fast. They come in in the form that you'll see here. You get a score report with the Cambridge and the University of Michigan logos there, as well as Michigan language assessment. On there, you have the scale scores as well as the CFR scores per skill and the global score representing an overall um, uh, scaled score and CFR level. You also get a nice looking certificate like this, again with the Cambridge and, and Michigan um, logos on it. I think that would look nice on anybody's wall. Uh, results tend to arrive within five days, so quite 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 quick uh, as things go. Um, score reports and certificates are digital and can be paper based, and you can share results with accepting institutions. So with our digital I guess evolution, as I said right at the beginning, we're gonna end on, on this particular slide. And it shows that we're getting more and more institutions recognizing MUT. Um, universities appreciate having a, a quality um, exam that can be taken from home. Um, they know it's reliable. We've got lots of research indicating that. Like I said, we've, nothing has changed in terms of the, the type of um, questions or tasks that you're asked to do. So all, there's a lot of good information on the website, which you can help use to familiarize yourself with the exam. And finally, that's me. Bang on time, I hope. So I will pass over now to the next person and Thank please you, share Gary. your questions with the panel. Yeah, you were super on time. So next we have the Duolingo English text. We have Ryan Munson. so please take it away. Thanks. Yeah, happy to. So thanks for, thanks for having us and able to see my screen. Just wanna make sure that that's going. Yes, yes. Perfect. Not in full view yet, though. Full view, yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, I am Ryan Munson. I am from the Duolingo English Test. I'm happy to be here. I am going to go through this pretty quickly. I want to leave plenty of time for everyone else to be able to chat about their exam as well. So I want to talk about the state of the test and, of course, of course Duolingo's commitment to access. Um, I know Johnny talked about that as well, and it is important to us as well. 
So moving right along, uh, we use assessment technology to lower barriers, increase opportunities for English language learners everywhere. That is our mission here at the Duolingo English Test. And we try to stick to that to make sure that everyone has an accessible way to test their English ability. So just in a quick review of our test, uh, we are accessible. So we are an online test. We're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week from the comfort of your home. Um, it is human and AI proctors. Uh, it's comprehensive, so it's still including all the things that you would regularly be tested on with any other exams out there. Um, it is quite fast. Uh, results are back within 48 hours to the student to be able to share. Um, of course, we do have lots of research as well um, that you can find online to see how we test and why we chose the questions that we did. And then, of course, that we're very secure. Um, again, we are AI computer proctors um, and do all kinds of things uh, like lock your browser down and things of that nature to make sure that the test stays secure uh, while you're taking the exam. Uh, I do want to highlight our access program. This is something that was in place before the pandemic, but really took off during the pandemic. Um, I highly recommend uh, if you're not reaching out to EduUSA, the, to institutions that you may be applying to, to ask them about the access program, they can apply completely for free and give away uh, coupon codes that will waive our $49 US fee to take our exam. Um, so if you are in need of one of those codes, by all means, please reach out to any institution you attend to uh, apply to, or of course your local EduUSA office will have access to this as well. Uh, we do have international acceptance. Uh, of course, the pandemic really accelerated this since we were an at-home test. Uh, none of our testing, we don't have testing centers, so nothing really shut down during the pandemic. We just saw quite a bit of growth, um, of course, here in the US, but across Canada, the UK, um, and of course, Australia as well. Dueling English tests in a few different steps. Uh, it's completely free to sign up uh, to create your account. You can take the practice test completely for free. It is a 15 minute test to really get used to our question types that are quite different. And the algorithm, because our test will get harder the more questions you get correct and get easier the more questions you get wrong. Um, but you'll take that test anytime you're ready. You can actually pay for it and then take it days later. Um, you can pay for it and take it immediately. Uh, again, all you need is access to the internet, have an active microphone and camera, and you're able to take the full exam. So testing takes about an hour. After that hour, uh, we will go through and then grade and make sure that everything is, it needs to be through the test. That takes about 48 hours to get back to you. Then you can go back and share to any one of our universities. Uh, there's never an extra charge for that. Uh, and of course, you can come back and log in and then share it as many times as you like to as many universities or colleges as you like as well. Um, once that certifi certification comes in, it does come in via email. Um, you will see your certificate and then be able to share through our, our dashboard, which is completely online. Um, of course, if you ever have any issues, we do have 24-7 uh, support as well through any of our websites with the orange help button in the bottom right hand of any of the, our corners of any of our websites. So that is my time. Uh, I tried to go pretty quickly, but uh, I appreciate everyone's time and I look forward to Q&A at the end. Thank you, Ryan. And now we have uh, Misty Wilson from the IELTS uh, English Test Option. So please, Misty. Hey, can everyone see my screen? Not yet. Okay. Might have tried to share it a little too early. Let me just... Take your time. That's... There we go. Yes, we can see. Okay. It. All right, thank you. All right, yeah, thank you to Education USA for um, having me. I'm Misty Wilson and I work with IELTS USA. Um, so I am going to give you uh, a little walkthrough of IELTS. Um, it is a test that's designed by experts and trusted around the world. Um, we have option of taking the test on paper or computer. Um, both of those tests have a live face-to-face -face speaking section. Um, and we offer two tests, IELTS Academic, uh, which is typically used for higher education or for vocational purposes, and then IELTS General Training, which is used for migration purposes. So most likely everyone in the audience today is uh, going to need IELTS Academic. IELTS Indicator is the temporary at-home test that we have that is being offered in countries where um, test centers may be temporarily closed due to COVID-19. Um, all of our tests are uh, report their scores on a nine band scale. 
And we have a variety of test questions. Uh, so not just multiple choice, but, but questions that are really designed to um, give you a chance to show off everything that you know in English. And we're jointly owned by three global partners. So British Council and IDP oversee test centers outside of the United States. I work with IELTS USA that oversees test centers in the United States. And then Cambridge Assessment English uh, is the one who designs the tests. So we all work together um, to provide IELTS around the world. So just a snapshot of IELTS academic, um, the first three sections, listening, reading, and writing are taken during one sitting. Um, and the speaking section can be taken before or after. So when you register for your test, you also get um, a time for your speaking part. And this is face-to-face -face, um, and I think really makes IELTS stand out so you have 11 to 14 minutes for the speaking section. So that allows you an opportunity to really show your strengths in vocabulary and grammar. And if you make a few mistakes at the beginning, you have plenty of time to really show your skills. You'll receive one overall um, score, and then you'll also receive a score for each of the skills um, of the test. And the, the total test time is two hours and 45 minutes. Um, we are accepted by over 3,400 institutions in the United States, uh, and, and it's important whenever you're looking at an institution um, and making sure that, you know, that the test that you want to take is accepted, that it's accepted completely and not just supplemental. So, so pay attention to that. Some tests might only be accepted as supplemental, um, but you want to make sure that the test is a test that you can submit and that's the only test that you need. So you can check out at our, um, on our website, a list of all of the organizations that accept IELTS. And I'll, I'll give you a link that you can go to in a minute. So I mentioned earlier that we have paper-based and computer delivered. So if you still prefer, um, maybe you're not as comfortable typing or you're in a location where there isn't strong internet, then, uh, then uh, paper-based might be um, the best choice for you. But the paper-based and computer delivered are offered um, for academic and general training. Paper-based is offered up to four times per month, and the computer delivered is offered two to three times per day, three to four days per week. Um, so there's also different times on how you'll get your results. So if you're taking paper-based tests, you'll receive your results uh, within 13 days. And then for computer delivered, you'll receive your results within three to five days. You'll have five complimentary test score reports that you can send out to the organizations that you're applying to. The IELTS indicator is offered for the academic test only. There's one session per week. And when you go to register, you'll see the available dates and times. Um, and those scores are offered. You'll get your score back within five to seven days. And then you can send your score report to as many institutions as you would like. Uh, when you're checking to see what score your institution requires, uh, you might want to pay attention to whether they have different overall score and different skill scores. So some institutions might have different scores for listening and reading. Um, and then some universities like New York University, for example, different schools within that university have different requirements. Um, but you can always check our website or check with the uh, university that you're applying for to see what scores are accepted. When you register for IELTS, uh, you'll go to the site, you'll click on the country, and then you'll see the option of paper or computer delivered that you can register for. You'll make, you'll register and pay directly to the test center. For IELTS Indicator, there is a separate site, IELTSindicator.com. You'll, you can check which countries this is available in currently, and then you'll see the session dates, times, and can register through there. We have a number of uh, resources that are available for you. And one of the great things about IELTS is as you prepare for IELTS, you're actually going to be increasing your language proficiency. Um, so I have a link that I'll share on the next slide uh, that will direct you to the other resources that we have. But we have lots of um, MOOCs that are online courses that are available for free, mobile apps, and then social media resources like our um, Instagram page, our Facebook page, and the, uh, our YouTube page where you can find a lot of uh, free resources to help you prepare. So this link I'll add into the chat um, as soon as I'm done. And this is somewhere where you can go. And if you're planning on taking the test in the United States, 
There's also a little link on there to um, add you to an email list where you can start getting some resources um, every, every week as you prepare. So that's it. If there's any questions, I look forward to answering them and I'll go ahead and turn it over to the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Misty. Now we have Anna Verovano from the ITEP English test. So please, Anna. All right. Okay, so let me share my screen first. Um, okay, it's just taking a while. Oh, there you go. Can you see it full screen? Yes. Okay, yes. sounds good. All right, so my name is Anna Peravano. I'm here representing ITAP. Thank you so much, Maria Luisa, and everyone at uh, Education USA um, for inviting us. So today I'm going to be talking about um, ITAP. So how how you can take ITAP from home if you want to study in the U.S. So we like to call ourselves a teenage company. We're not a brand new company in the in the market. We've been around for almost 20 years, so since 2002. And since then, um, we've grown all over the world. We do have public test centers over hundreds, um, six or eight, 700 public test centers all over the world. We do have partner schools and companies, and we also have a portfolio of both academic and professional exams. For the purpose of this uh, presentation, I'm going to be focusing on the academic tests. So um, why should you take ITAP if you're thinking about studying in the US? Um, with ITAP, you can use one of our test centers so you can see them on the website. And with the test centers, um, they don't have set dates. So, it's, uh, so, so the tests are administered on demand. Um, but if you want to take them from home, we do have the at-home admissions testing available. And this has started um, since the pandemic started back in March, 2020. Um, there is no absolutely no scheduling with the at home option, you can take the ITAP exam 24 seven. The scores are available in 24 hours or less, and this is guaranteed we I, I've seen tests um, results being delivered in, in 12 hours, because of the pool of graders that we have across the US. Um, so the test can be the test results can be delivered within 24 hours or less. Um, the students get a digital school report sent to their email address and also directly to their school of choice. So they choose uh, three options of schools when they're registering and they can send the results directly to their school of choice. Um, so in the US, we're accepted by hundreds of universities um, and colleges. There is a searchable database on our website. You can filter by country, um, by state, by city. So it's pretty easy to find. It's under um, university admissions. Uh, we do have a competitive price. It's 129 US dollars. And you get a free practice test with every test order. So that allows you to be familiar with the test structure, uh, with uh, what to expect from the test before you take the actual test. Um, so let's say you do not achieve the score that you need to be accepted by, let's say, NYU, which is one of the partner schools that we have, you can retake the test in 48 hours if needed. So there's no, there's just the 48 hours waiting, but there's no waiting longer than that. Um, we do have enhanced security for the uh, at-home option, which I'll, I'm going to explain a little bit uh, further in uh, some slides ahead. So just so you have an idea of what the test structure looks like, we do cover five skills, um, uh, grammar, reading, listening, writing, and speaking. So you can see how much time you're going to be spending in each one of these sections. Uh, the tests are no longer than 90 minutes in duration. So you do all these uh, skills in under 90 minutes. Um, all of our tests are online internet based. Uh, we do, our score reports are very comprehensive. Uh, you get to see linguistic subskills in the report. So you get to see not just the overall and the, uh, and the scores by uh, sections, but also the linguistic subskills within the sections. Um, so our score range is from zero to six. And I put some, um, just, just an idea of uh, the scores required by some of our partner schools in the US for undergraduate program. Um, it is between 3.6 to 3.8 based on a 6.0 scale. 
that is equivalent to a B1, B2 level, which is uh, intermediate, upper intermediate level. So the registration process, it's really straightforward. It's a, it's a four-step process. Uh, all you have to do is just go to the ITAP website, which is itapexam.com. Right on the homepage, you will see the uh, at-home option available, or you can choose uh, take the ITAP um, in person. So you will see a list of the test centers. Uh, if you do choose the at-home option, you select the Academic Plus for university admissions. That's the, the test that is used for ad, um, admissions within universities. You pay online, and then you receive the practice and official test ideas within 48 hours. So you can take the practice test at your convenience. And like I said before, that would be a good way for you to be familiar with the test structures and what to, to expect. And then you can take the actual, the official academic plus test and receive the scores within 24 hours. Okay, so what is new? Um, we have some resources for you to practice on our website, but since last uh, March, I think it was March, we launched these, uh, the, the self sorry, self-paced online course. Um, this is available on our website too. So if you want to prepare and practice before you take the actual um, exam, we do have the iPrep self-paced online course available on our website. If you do a bundle, if you uh, get the test, the, the prep course plus the test ID, you get it all together for 175 US dollars. So it's pretty uh, convenient because you get to see what the, you get prepared, you know, get all the preparation before uh, the actual test. And then, like I said, you also get a free practice test with the purchase of, of the ITAP Academic. So we give you plenty resources for you to prepare uh, for the test. Um, so I'm not going to show all the section, the breakdown of all the sections. I just wanted to show you two uh, slides. One is the registration page, and it's basically just for you to see how simple it is. Um, all you have to do is put your um, personal information. Uh, you have the option to upload your photo ID or hold it up so the webcam can picture capture the picture of your uh photo ID, and then fill out all the information. And then at the bottom, you choose the schools that you want the score reports to be sent to. And this is the slide that I really wanted to show you because this is a new feature that we have. Uh, you know, when you're listening and sometimes the conversation can be a three minute, four minute conversation and you, you want to take notes, right? Um, if you are in a test center, we do allow you to take notes on a piece of paper, but because at, with the at home option, because you are at home um, and we do have the virtual proctoring, but we don't you, don't, you won't have anyone a live proctoring with you, we do allow we, we um, implemented this new feature in the listening section, which allows you to take notes on the screen. So we have that little notepad on the screen for you to take notes while you're listening to the listen to the conversations and passages in the listening section. So this uh, on the website, like I said, you see a full list of all the uh, um, universities and colleges that accept ITAP for admissions, but I just wanted to put some logos of some of the universities that uh, we work with um, for you to have an idea. And these are only in the US, but we do have um, in other countries as well. Uh, when it comes to security, I did mention before security, we do have our own software and that software takes photographs of the, te of the test taker throughout um, the whole exam. Uh, these photos are reviewed by, uh, by the ITAP graders. Um, so this is part of the uh, enhanced security that I was talking about earlier. Um, just to recap, why should you take ITAP? Um, ITAP is comprehensive, practical, convenient, and fast, um, available in test centers and also at home, uh, you get a free practice, practice test, you get your free, uh, sorry, you're graded in um, your scores in 24 hours or less, and it's uh, affordable. If you do follow us on Facebook, uh, we are giving away three Academic Plus combos. Um, and uh, yes, just follow us on Facebook and you'll be eligible to win. And just my, my face and uh, my name and email address in case you have any questions, 
uh, that's my email email address. So thank you thank so much. You, Sorry, Anna. I was just going over the time, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. We understand. Thank you all for right, all the information. You. Now we'll move on to um, Meredith Stokes from the Pearson English Test. So please take it away, Meredith. Hi, everyone. Let me share my screen. Okay, so um, today is going to be a little bit different for us. I'm going to scooch through these uh, slides, but we have some pretty awesome um, news for test takers out there. And um, the first thing I want to talk about is the changes that we have made to PTE, and um, they're pretty quick and painless. And I think for test takers, they are um, exciting. So the test has gone from a three-hour window to a two-hour window. Um, that's the, the first change. So it comes after reviewing 10 years of data of the tests. Um, we removed an optional break that was not used very often. Um, and then we had a, a couple sections that we had a really big bulk of questions. So we've removed some of those questions. Aside from that, nothing else about the test changes. Um, the sections remain the same, the scoring remains the same, the um, score reports will be the same. Um, so there will be no break anymore, um, but there will be a shorter test for the test takers. So um, everything else stays the same. You can book PTE um, up to two hours, 24 hours in advance. Um, and I think the really neat thing about PTE is that a student can sit for the exam, they can register for the exam, sit for the exam and get the, the scores over to the school within four days. So from start to finish, it's a very quick process. The exciting news is that we, um, in addition to having our 370 test centers, we now offer PTE online. So um, in addition to our, our brick and mortar test um, accessibility, as we all know, is, an, is a need. Um, most of our students coming from Latin America have uh, a lot of issues as far as getting to test centers. So we wanted to make sure that uh, PTE can also be offered anywhere. So um, as far as Acceptance of PTE, we have uh, acceptance 100% in Australia, 99% in the UK, 90% in Canada, and over a thousand institutions in the US. So um, lots of scholarships as well, including Fulbright um, in the US, and we work with IIE uh, closely. So a PTE can be used for scholarships as well. So just to talk a little bit about online, um, that's really kind of what I'm gonna focus on today just because I know everyone's already familiar with PTE. So um, again, the only change is the modality. So PTE is now offered online, uh, still administered by VUE. Pearson VUE, who is um, an expert at testing, does testing for just about every um, occupation you can imagine. So. Uh, we've delivered more than 2 million online proctored exams worldwide, and it's, it's really just increasing about 300% a year since the start of each, since this, the pandemic started, we've seen that, that type of increase each year. As I talked about, uh, the test is identical in content and item types, two hours in duration, scored the same way, and uh, format is the same. So for test takers that are interested in taking PTE online, the couple things that you need to know, um, a quiet private location, it does not have to be your house, but it does have to be quiet and it does have to be private. The reason I keep emphasizing private is because if another person walks by, um, that's, it, it can invalidate, it would invalidate your score. So um, a reliable computer with a webcam and a wired headset um, and a strong internet connection. Uh, we have onload, you are going to have to download and run some software from OnView, um, and that's all available before your session to test your system. So um, we encourage everyone to do the system check um, before starting. While testing on PTE Academic, I think it's important to know that there will be no breaks, um, and no standing, um, no smartwatches. Personal items must be out of reach. And again, no other people can enter the testing space while the test is going. We do have a live chat function to uh, access support as well. And if the internet fails, because this is the number one question we've gotten, 
uh, the exam timer stops and candidates can fix the internet connection and then the exam would restart. So making the right testing choice. Uh, we really encourage our test takers to make sure that in order before taking and signing up for a PTE online, a few things that you have all of the criteria um, in your system, as well as that your school is accepting PTE online. Uh, we just launched PTE online a few days ago, so um, we don't have a thousand schools that are recognizing. However, there's over a hundred already in the United States. Um, there's schools in Australia, in Ireland, in the UK, as well as Canada that are already accepting PTE online. So we just ask that you go to your school's website and see if they are accepting PTE online. The test price is the same as the local PTE price, and that is because you are having a live uh, Pearson View proctor um, that is doing the remote proctoring. Again, um, very easy to book the test. You do that online. All of our preparation material is online. I would encourage any of you guys that are looking for a language test to go to every test's websites and use all the free information that we've put out there. Uh, we have free quizzes, there's test questions. Um, we have a YouTube channel and I know everybody else does as well. So I know that there's a lot of test prep material that can be um, accessed and that's, that's free. This is a quick look at what our PTE score report looks like. I think that the nice difference about our score is that it's granular. So you really get a, a breakdown on a scale of 10 to 90. Um, where your English level sits. So instead of trying to, to go back and do an entire weekend that's test prep um, focused, you can focus on your listening and your reading skills if that's what's bringing you down. Um, this particular candidate, she could improve her writing skills. So I would encourage her to work on her writing and not so much focus on test prep as a whole because our goal is to really increase the English skills and not the test taking skills. Um, schools can verify via our score reporting website or they can be they can verify it um, by being provided a unique test taker ID. Um, and the test takers usually get that uh, 1.2 days has been our average for the last year. So 98% of our of our test takers received their scores in that little of time. Just a quick look again at uh, where we've been over the last 10 to 11 years. Uh, we're pretty excited about where we're going and the accessibility that this provides. Um, it's being able to access a high stakes language test um, that SECURE is really something that we're proud of. Uh, I've put a link here if anybody would like to take get a, a free test. We have 25 available, so the first 25 that fill this out and send me an email or just want a practice test code, they can email me also and I will send that over. So thank you so much. Thank you, Meredith, for, for your presentation. And now it's uh, Jair Ayala Sarate's turn from TOEFL. Take it away, Jair, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Just uh, going to share my screen. Can you see my full screen now? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so um, I'm going to answer uh, the questions we were asked in order for us to be able to prepare this presentation for you all. Uh, the first one was the lessons that we have learned uh, based on the pandemic situation everyone is going through. Secondly, uh, the connectivity. Uh, third, full, third, full, uh, third full, we, uh, in regards to uh, security of, of the test improvement in the service, um, upgrades offered, and challenges. So uh, in order for us to be able to answer these questions, we um, started off in uh, March 26 last year, um, introducing the home edition of TOEFL IBT, which is um, one of the most popular exams around the world. So uh, based on the learned experiences, um, we launched last month TOEFL Essentials. TOEFL Essentials is uh, the very uh, the most recent 
a piece of exam that we have come up with in ETS as the result of uh, research that we conduct in ETS. Um, this exam joins uh, the five, the four language skills, and also it tests um, structure and vocabulary. This exam is um, a combination of both types of uh, language, academic and general. And uh, in a couple of slides, I'm gonna share with you some comparison between TOEFL IBT, which is the exam that most of us know of, and also um, TOEFL Essentials. So also this exam is designed for high stakes university admission and other uses as well. Um, this exam is shorter than TOEFL IBT, and it is also scored by um, a human rater and an automated um, rater. This exam is um, for traditional, uh, it has various possibilities for the score users. Uh, for example, you can uh, combine based on the common European framework. And of course it has a, a, its own uh, scale and it also could be compared with TOEFL IBT. Important here to, to bear in mind, this has um, a personal video statement that is not scored is part of the test, but it is not scored. This gives the possibility for the candidate to actually show who he or she is um, using the language, all right? And uh, here, so here more specifically, it has a virtual interview. It is virtual because um, there is a person asking you some questions. You are not requested to interact with this person. You are just uh, prompted some questions and based on those questions, you are going to answer on a video, uh, which is the exam is video recorded throughout the, the exam, you are going to be video recorded. And that is part of the security of the exam as well. Um, also, as I said before, you're going to be asked, used um, some questions that are related to vocabulary and some questions that are related to uh, sentence construction. And this um, innovation here, the personal video statement, it's uh, for students, to demonstrate who they actually are using the language. This is a piece of evidence for the score recipients. The exam takes one hour and a half, and um, it is of course accepted by uh, institutions, universities, and schools. Basically, um, they are starting to, to introduce it in their, um, in their um, portfolio of exams to receive, to accept students. Uh, comparison chart here, as I said, we're going to see uh, the similarities and differences between TOEFL Essentials and TOEFL IBT. Um, as I said before, this exam, a TOEFL Essentials, um, measures both academic and general English, whereas TOEFL IBT uh, works with academic English. The 50% of the exam is general English, whereas the 50% of the other 50% is um, academic English. Uh, TOEFL IBT is 100% academic English. Um, the exam is um, shorter. It's one hour and a half, whereas TOEFL IBT is three hours. It has four sections plus the, the five minute uh, personal video statement, which once again is not scored. Uh, TOEFL IBT has the four sections, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. This is the same order in which you are going to take the exam on the one hand, uh, TOEFL IBT, there you have listening, reading, writing, and speaking. This is the order of the testing in the TOEFL Essentials. Here, um, the exam TOEFL Essentials measures from A1 up to C2. On the other hand, TOEFL IBT measures from B1 up to C2. So um, the scope is wider in TOEFL Essentials, if we want to say it like that. Um, well, uh, both exams can be taken at home and only um, TOEFL, Essen TOEFL Essentials can be taken at home only. TOEFL IBT, you may take it at a testing center or you may take it um, at home. All right, so here, another difference could be like uh, for TOEFL Essentials, students looking for a test that blends quality and convenience with an engaged format Whereas TOEFL IBT, uh, aspiring students looking to stand out, 
All right, so that would be like the, the main difference there to bear in mind. Okay. This is the type of score report that we have for TOEFL Essentials. Uh, these are measured from one to 12, and this we can find information in our website about how they are aligned, not only with TOEFL IBT, but also of course, with the common European framework. Now, relating, um, talking about TOEFL IBT Home Edition, which we have been using since March 26 last year, um, there are only three differences between taking the exam at home and taking the exam at one of our testing centers. Uh, first of all, you are going to use um, the microphone of uh, the speakers of your computer. Um, you are not allowed to use headsets or earphones. That is just like a part of the security of the exam. You are going to be supervised by ProctorU, which is another company that has been you doing this type of um, activity for over 10 years. So this um, is, is the result of the pandemic situation, but this company has been doing this for years. So the experience and expertise of that company is the one that guarantees that the security of the exam uh, accomplishes the minimal requirements that we have. Okay, good. Also important for both exams, TOEFL Essentials and TOEFL IBT, we have uh, this um, activity which is called My Best Scores. And this combines your highest scores of previously exams that you have taken. So um, the example here shows uh, three different tests this uh, candidate took before, and then automatically we are going to select the highest scores that you have achieved in each of the language skills. And then when you take TOEFL Essentials or TOEFL IBT, you are going to receive both scores. Your today's, let's say, score report, and also you're going to receive your best scores. And then um, universities, institutions are, of course, accepting both my best scores and also your, uh, let's say, your most recent score report. Um, how to create an account is very easy. It is as easy as uh, when you create your own email account. So it is very uh, simple, just like to fill out with your personal information. And then you're going to provide more um, information that is going to uh, help you create your account in ETS website. With only one account, you can have access to TOEFL Essentials or to TOEFL IBT. Here are some material for you to um, prepare yourselves. You can have access to this link here. You can visit our website, ets.org and then you can have access to all the material that you can um, use for you to uh, prepare for TOEFL Essentials or for TOEFL IBT. Here, well, just uh, some examples of uh, free TOEFL IBT dress preparation. Also, you can find some free uh, preparation material for TOEFL Essentials. Just uh, feel free to visit our main website. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Jair, for, for your your presentation, thank you all for your preparation and the details that you shared with us. Now we'll move on to answer a couple of questions that we received. I think one of them may be most pressing one with the options to take tests at home is what if I face so much, um, you know, power issues or internet instability? How can I manage this, these kinds of situations? Are there options to you know, take the test again or get reimbursed? Would anybody, maybe two or three people want to share their answers um, verbally <laughs> and then other people share them in the, in the text, in the chat box and that way we can accommodate everyone. Who wants to? Jay, you, I think you raise your hand first. Do you want to go first? <laughs> all right, thank you very much. Okay, uh, so yes, um, as, as, we did, as we do offer TOEFL Essentials and TOEFL IBT at home edition, so um, if anything happens like force may or like a electricity cut or your, like your connectivity or anything like that, you just need to contact us and we reschedule your exam. There is no problem whatsoever. So there is no problem. I mean, like, uh, actually what I say, you know, like as a test taker myself, I have taken those exams uh, during the pandemics. Uh, nothing happened to me, fortunately, but if it had happened to me, what I would have done was to take that as a learning experience. 
So for the next time that I'm going to take the exam, I already know what it is about, right? Um, so yeah, there is no problem, I guess. There is no problem with that. Okay, Anna, I see you um, wanna respond. Yeah, yeah, just uh, this is actually a question that we get a lot. Um, I guess all my colleagues also get those questions too. Um, uh, we do, if that happens, if, if let's say the power goes down or if anything happens while the students are taking the exam because our exams are um, internet based, um, the test will stop and then you will be able to restart from where you left off and everything else that you did before get, is saved so you, it's you don't lose what you what you started you know like the information that you had let's say you did reading and listening and then it stopped when you were in the list in the writing section everything else that you did before gets saved so you don't lose it you can resume from where you started all right, and Johnny, do you want to? Yeah, a combination of what um, Anna, Jaid, and also Meredith are saying. Um, if it's within the testing frame window, then the same as what Meredith mentioned in the chat. It pauses. You can resume and pick it straight back up. Sometimes the kind of disconnections can be for longer than may maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And in that case, we would do what uh, Jai was, was saying there in terms of it'd be a reschedule. Um, so that decision will be made on the day, but where we can, we'll try and, you know, once we'll try and let the candidate regain connectivity, resume the test, no, no progress would be lost. Um, but if it's an extended blackout of some kind, then it would be a reschedule. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for sharing. Another maybe also useful question and, and difficult question that we face is, you know, when you talked, and many of you share these resources already, but when you talk about practicing the, for the test, practicing taking the test, oftentimes this also has a cost. So do you have any recommendations for navigating this process of practicing taking the test? And um, maybe we can have uh, other people share the resources if you didn't already during your presentation, or uh, we can you can share them with, with us, uh, Education USA, and we'll add them to the comment section in the on the Facebook Live, so it stays as an archive. But I don't know. I, I know. I know. For example, oh, there you go, Hazel. Thank you. <laughs> that thank helps. you. Well, in Cambridge, we have a lot of resources. Let me put it in the chat. We have a feature called Write and Improve that can help you in your writing. We have also another platform called Speak and Improve that can help you with your with your speaking. And we have also an app for this for the cell phone for your mobile that it's with your English. So I will put it in the chat so you can check and see if you can practice and I'm sure you will improve a lot with your English in the writing and speaking and quiz your English. Awesome. And Misty, I see your hand up as well. Yeah. Um, so if the link that I shared earlier and I'll share it again can direct you to some of the free IELTS prep materials. I just wanted to add on there always, um, you know, to make sure that you're finding real materials that have been created by people who really know IELTS make sure that they've been created by either Cambridge Assessment English, British Council, or IDP. So all three organizations create IELTS prep materials. So as long as you're going to one of those sources, then you know that those materials um, can be trusted. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, Ryan, maybe I think you, you activated your video. So I take that as a sign. Sure. Yeah. With uh, Duolingo English test, you can take the practice test uh, completely for free. Once you sign up for an account, it actually is on your dashboard and you can take it as many times as you like. Um, and it is definitely the best way to practice before you take the full exam. Cool. Great. Thank you. And then one last question, just to be mindful of everybody's time. Um, what if I, I, I am a minor and I don't have an ID? to show my, to verify my, my name and, and everything. And that I don't have maybe the funds or the possibility to get a passport, for example. What can I do to verify my identity when taking the test? Are there other options? I know I've talked about this with, uh, with Jair actually. I don't know if you wanna start us off with, with the options with TOEFL. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I, I just remembered that. And that is pretty easy. You just need to ask your school to give you a letter. Uh, that letter has to be like uh, from your school, 
with the uh, school principal's um, signature to make sure that actually it is a valid letter. And then of course, that is enough for you to be able to take a TOEFL exam at a testing center. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wanna share what can be the plan B if I don't have a valid ID because I'm a minor? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, also, if yeah. you need, uh, if you want to have more detailed information about ID's requirements, you can visit once again our website. I already shared the links there in the in the chat box for you to have like very detailed information in every specific case. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much um, to everyone, to all of you, seven representatives and, and other people who who took place, who, who, who participated in this webinar taking place. Remember this content is gonna stay available on the Education USA Guatemala Facebook page, but also we'll upload it to YouTube, to our library of resources. Again, thanks so much for the participants and for our representatives who spent their, their afternoon uh, with us today. It really is a pleasure meeting you and sharing my time with you. I know that we have a lot of options to choose from and that is exciting, just as the many options of US higher education institutions in the US. So we hope that this session was useful. Please take care and stay safe. And oh, before I leave, actually, we have some coming sessions. So please go ahead and um, scan those QR codes or look at our social media. You know, we share, we bombard you with uh, sessions, but we have an upcoming session next week with uh, different representatives in a round table talking about graduate professional is emphasizing education. And then we'll talk about what is early decision and early action the following week. So make sure that you register if this, these are topics that interest you. And please stay safe, take care. Until the next time. Bye bye. Thank you.